Recently, I took the DP700 exam to become a certified Microsoft Fabric data engineer. And I'm happy to say that I passed. And so now over the next 10 weeks or so, I'm gonna be recording a series of videos to help you also pass this exam. And you might have a few questions about this, like what's in the exam? How does it compare to the DP600? For example, we did a series on DP600 that's got over 300,000 views and it's helped hundreds, maybe up to a thousand or more now have passed that exam. Let's hope for the same, if not better for this exam. But you're probably wondering, should I bother with this? Should I invest the time in this? Where will it take me and how do I prepare? And also you're probably wondering, okay, what are you gonna be doing on the channel? How are you gonna be covering this content? So in this video, that is exactly what we're gonna be going through. If you're new here, Nice to meet you, my name's Will. I now teach Fabric completely full-time on this platform, on YouTube, and also on two communities that we've got on school. I'll tell you a bit more about those later. But for now, let's talk about why we're doing this now. Well, as of the 14th of January, 2025, Microsoft launched the DP700, that data engineering exam. It's the second certification exam that they've released. And they've released it into general availability. So previously it was just a beta exam, but now it's generally available. Alongside that, to try and encourage people, you know, gently push them towards this direction, Microsoft have also released a 50% off discount voucher. So you can take the exam for 50% off discount. So there's a few caveats to this voucher scheme, which are worth going through them now, right? So you have to have achieved either the DP203 certification, that Azure data engineering that they're actually retiring at the end of March, I believe it is. So if you've done that before, then you qualify, or you can complete the modules in the Fabric Learning Path. I'll leave a link to these in the description below. Or attended one of the Get Certified DP700 live or on-demand learning sessions. Then you can apply for the voucher. And from the moment you get given the voucher, I believe you have 30 days to take the exam, right? There's a few more guidelines that you need to bear in mind this time. Last time they just had 100%, knock yourselves out, go and do the exam. This time there's a few different terms and conditions that you need to be aware of. So those vouchers are available until the 31st of March, or if they run out before then, I believe there's 20,000 in total. You know, these are the kind of dates that we're working with, 14th of January, which is a week ago now or so, and 31st of March. So my plan is to use that time to try and create as much content as possible to help you pass this DP700 exam. So let's just start off with why should you even bother, right? It's a bit of a time investment, this. If you want to become DP700 certified, it is quite a tough exam. So depending on your level of experience, your background and things like that, it's gonna take you quite a considerable investment in learning, education, hands-on practice as well, if you're lacking that. So why did you, should you even bother? Well, in my opinion, starting off with, well, why get certified in general? Well, it gives you a structure to your learning, right? If you pass, it shows that you've got this foundation level of knowledge, maybe even above foundational level for this particular exam. Although the certification alone is not necessarily a sign, you know, it's not gonna get you a job, necessarily it might help you get a job, but on its own, I would argue a certification does not get you a job. If you work in a consultancy, can be beneficial for winning work and potentially getting paid more as well. But why data engineering a bit more broadly? So data engineering is at the heart of every solid data platform and every trusted decision that goes on in your organization, right? In your business. You know, many, many businesses have been doing without data engineering. You know, they've been doing BI, they've been doing data science maybe, but eventually most businesses come to the conclusion that actually data engineering is really, really important for successful BI decision-making and increasingly important it will be for AI decision-making. So the need for good data engineering solutions is only gonna get stronger in the market right, with the incoming AI revolution. On top of that, on a personal level, it's a really in-demand skill set, right, because of these market forces and the way that technology is evolving, data engineers are becoming more and more valuable, more and more difficult to find for companies as well, and therefore they get paid really well. Okay, so what about the DP700 exam? What is to be assessed 
Well, the structure is very similar to the DP600. You're going to receive between 50 and 60 questions, roughly, and that includes one case study which is going to be around 10 questions, roughly. There's three sections to this exam, or rather three kind of buckets of information that you need to know. Implementing and managing an analytics solution, which is roughly 15 to 20 questions. Now, helpfully, all three of these sections are the same weight in the DP700. So you can expect a similar number of questions across all of them. So you've got implementing and managing a analytic solution here, ingesting and transforming data, and then monitoring and optimizing an analytic solution. Huge part of being a data engineer. So let's just start off with that first category. So in this section, we're going to be asked to look at workspace settings. So in general, administration of workspaces. There's some tenant level settings as well. But it's essentially how do you set up an environment like version control? How do you set up deployment pipelines? thinking about access control, right? At a workspace level, at an item level, and even more granular, right? Row level security, OLS, object level security, column level security, dynamic data masking, a few other things in there as well. You're also gonna be receiving questions about data governance, right? Particularly around the certification of items, so endorsement, that kind of thing as well. And also around sensitivity labels as well. Now the final category in there is around orchestration, right? So this was partly assessed, I would argue, in DP600, but it goes to more depth in the DP700, right? You need to know a bit more about how to use particular activities and also more broader patterns, right? What are the different orchestration patterns that you might see and use in a company, in a solution? In the middle category, this is a really weighty category in terms of there's lots of big topics in here, but you have to be careful because there's only 15 to 20 questions, right? It's the same weighting, but arguably there's a lot more crammed into it. So you're going to be learning about the different methods that we can use for ingestion, not just this, but when to make decisions about when certain ones might be better than others, right? When should you use a data pipeline? When should you use a data flow? When should you use a, a notebook, for example? When should you be using an event stream as well? Because Real-time streaming, real-time intelligence experience is heavily featured in this DP700 exam. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. We're also going to need knowledge of full and incremental loading patterns, right? So previously, again, in DP600, wasn't really mentioned. And I will say that they do go into depth here, right? So you're going to have to get into the code, into some Spark code, understand how to do incremental loading in Spark in a variety of different engines, or rather languages of Spark, like Spark SQL, PySpark, for example, and also the Python Delta package as well. You're gonna need a good knowledge of data stores, right? So lake houses, data warehouses, event houses, data transformation as well. Then we have this big category around streaming data. So understanding about event streams, firstly, getting data either from directly from sources or probably more likely from things like Azure Event Hubs, IoT Hub, that kind of thing. How can we then transform that data or store the data in an event house and then analyze it using KQL and all of that very powerful engine that we've got in the KQL language and in the event house. So you're gonna need pretty good knowledge in T-SQL, KQL, and PySpark. And the way that I would describe it is that in DP600, you were kind of asked you know, to fill in the blanks for certain things. And you kind of could get away with not really understanding how that works, as long as you knew the right thing to put in there. The questions in DP700, in my experience, they require a deeper level of knowledge about how code is executed, why you might choose a particular thing over another thing. For example, joins is a good example. It's not just you know, knowing the difference between left join and a right join or in inner, inner join, for example, but it's when would you use those and what would be the implication on performance, for example, or how would you optimize a particular query? And we'll look at that in the next section going forward as well. So the final section is around monitoring and optimizing an analytics solution. And in here, we've got three big buckets, really. Monitoring, error handling, and optimizing. Now, all of these are related, but different. And you're gonna to need to know how to do this for many different items in Fabric, right? So how do you monitor a lake house? How do you monitor queries that are going on in a warehouse? How do you monitor an event stream? How do you monitor a data pipeline, right? So all these 
to, uh, these things, yes, some monitoring methods are overlapping between all these things, but sometimes you have unique ways that we can monitor each item. Likewise with error handling, right? How do you debug a PySpark job? How do you debug a data pipeline run, for example? Again, all of these have some overlap, but they're unique in how you identify the error and then resolve the error. Finally, optimizing solutions in Fabric. Now, again, this is where you need a slightly higher level of experience and understanding, right? It's not just what is this solution, but it's how can we optimize this solution for a particular goal, right? So it might ask you about, okay, we've got this table and it's in the bronze layer. So it's going to be very write intensive rather than read intensive. How can you optimize that in your medallion architecture, for example? Or you've got a KQL script that's not really performing very efficiently, or it's not optimized. How can you refactor the script to make it more efficient over really large volumes of data, for example? So we'll be going into a lot of examples about optimizations and things that we can do in our code and how we set up our data stores as well. Ultimately, so we get this really good, well-rounded level of experience in fabric data engineering. And a few more general points, I would say, here on this list, I've kind of listed out pretty much exactly what the study guide says, right? But what I found in the exam was that you need to understand how the different services in fabric interact with each other within a kind of end-to-end -end or a coherent solution, okay? So what I would just mention, just to add a little bit of color to this, a common question that I get asked is how does the DP700 compare to the DP600? Obviously we've got thousands and thousands of people who took the DP600, so you're quite familiar with that. And it kind of depends also on when you took the DP600 because the contents of the DP600 changed reasonably dramatically, November the 15th, 2024. So if you took it after that, you know, there was some KQL added, removed PySpark, that sort of thing. So as you can see here, they are covering a lot of similar ground, but in almost all cases, you require a deeper level of knowledge. And obviously the other things are new or exclusive to the DP700. So things like, you, know, you go a lot deeper on orchestration, like patterns, incremental loading, event houses, streaming data, that kind of thing, PySpark as well now. Again, monitoring and optimizing was touched upon in DP600. You need to go a lot deeper in DP700 and error handling as well. So what are the official resources to be aware of? Well, for me, these two are the kind of gold standard, the DP700 study guide and the documentation. I personally would be using these two as well as this YouTube series, obviously, kind of in conjunction. If you've never taken a Microsoft exam before, I definitely recommend this resource, the exam experience and sandbox. It tells you what type of questions, like the, the question types, like multiple choice or case study, some of them are like drag and drop boxes or put things in the right order. So the different question types that you get in a Microsoft exam. And to be honest, from my experiences kind of helping people through the DP600, lots of people lose quite a lot of marks due to the way that they approach the exam, or maybe just a little bit of inexperience in exam technique, time management, that sort of thing. I'll be doing a whole video towards the end of this series with some of my top tips for the exam, which will focus a lot more on you know, like time management, that sort of thing, and exam technique. Because I think yeah, some people lose maybe 20% of the marks up to 25% because they just simply run out of time in the exam. They don't get through all the questions and that can have a big impact on your score. Also have the self-directed learning modules. If you're going to take the voucher, this is one of the routes that you'll need is to complete this course. Now, I would say that it's a little bit light, to be honest. So I wouldn't focus entirely on this and think, oh, I've done the course. I'm ready for the exam. I don't think it's enough to pass this exam. You need a deeper level of knowledge than what is covered in that self-directed learning path. So use it as a guide, use it as an introduction, but yeah, definitely use the documentation as well alongside it, because that goes a lot deeper. So what's the plan for the channel? Well, here at the Learn Microsoft Fabric with Will YouTube channel, we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did for DP600, releasing a variety of videos, maybe 12, maybe more, you know, there's quite a lot of stuff to get through. My goal is to finish it by middle of March, 2025, you know, so give you some time to take that exam if you've got the voucher by the end or the middle or the end of March. That's the plan. Now, for the first time, I'm also creating more content in Fabric Dojo. So Fabric Dojo is our paid community where we have over 200 members in there. So alongside the, you know, they'll always be free on YouTube, that content staying there. But for people that want a bit more detail, a bit more support, 
live sessions that I'm going to be running uh, and also lots of hands-on tutorials. Right? What I found with the DP600 is that the one thing that people lack normally is hands-on experience. So in Fabric Dojo as well, I'll leave a link in the description. We're going to be doing detailed study notes, live sessions for each of the different weeks so you can ask questions you know, if you get stuck on any of these stuff. And there's over 60 hands-on tutorials that are specific to DP700 content already in there. So the pre-study facts, frequently asked questions, i.e. what do people ask normally before they start revising? How long do I need to prepare? Very difficult question to answer, but it's normally dependent on the individual. If you've been working in uh, fabric, data engineering, building solutions in the last year, you've got recent practical experience, it might take you less than a month just to kind of understand the different elements of the study guide, brush up on a few things you might not have uh, experienced on your project yet, but it's not going to take you too long if you've got recent practical experience as a fabric data engineer. Now I would argue that between one and three months it might take you. If you're familiar with a lot of the concepts and the content just from looking at the study guide and what we talked about earlier in the video, if you're familiar with that but maybe you haven't quite done it in fabric yet, so maybe you're an Azure data engineer, you've worked in Synapse or Databricks or something like that. It will take you maybe a bit longer. You just need to work out how Fabric works in terms of where to click all the buttons and stuff like that and what they expect for the exam. But if you have that strong kind of depth of knowledge of experience, you've got a few years as a data engineer on other platforms. Again, it's not going to take you too long to prepare. If a lot of these concepts are new to you, you're approaching this for the first time, you haven't done this on other platforms, then it's going to take you longer. There's more in-depth knowledge and experience that you need for this exam than the DP600. So, you know, if you worked really hard and then you're in that position, it might take you two months, but probably more realistic would be three, four, five, six months, or maybe more. How do you know if you're ready to take the exam? Again, difficult to answer. Now, normally they have practice tests. I haven't seen one for the DP700 yet, but, you know, keep an eye out for that. There might be one. But yeah, ultimately, I will just watch these videos, take on board other people's content, read the documentation as well. I think in yourself, you'll know, you know, is this going in? Do I really understand this stuff? The final one that I get asked a lot is, is this course or content enough for me to pass the exam? Now, this course is meant to serve as like a hyper condensed summary of all the information that's relevant to the DB700. I recommend definitely also using the documentation as the backbone of your preparation as well, like I mentioned previously, and reviewing other content out there in the world, right? There's lots of other people I'm sure making DP700 related content. Everyone explains things in different ways. It's really good to triangulate different concepts, hearing how other people explain things as well. That's going to be the fastest way that you can learn this stuff. So with that, I'm going to leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in joining our DP700 bootcamp in Fabric Dojo, just to give you a little bit more confidence and experience with the exam, then sign up below. If not, carry on on YouTube and I'll leave a link to the next video in this series to click here in that box. I'll see you there.